Halloween 2018 from Titan Books, the official movie novelization by John Passarella. In 1978, Laurie Strode survived an encounter with Michael Myers, a masked figure who killed her friends and terrorized the town of Haddonfield, Illinois, on Halloween night. Myers was later gunned down, apprehended, and committed to Smith's Grove State Hospital. For 40 years, memories of that nightmarish ordeal have haunted Lori, and now Myers is back once again on Halloween night, having escaped a routine transfer, leaving a trail of bodies in his wake. This time, Lori is prepared with years of survival training to protect herself. Her daughter, Karen, and her granddaughter, Allison, a teenager separated from her family and enjoying Halloween festivities. The film was adapted into novelized form and released the same month in October 2018 by former Horror Writers Association Bram Stoker Award winner, John Passarella. Other media tie-ins by him include Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Supernatural, two horror TV series. Coming in at 371 pages, it's a hefty novelization, giving introspectives on each character. Like many other novelizations, it gives us various expansions in spots and scenes. What makes this one top-notch is he really puts a lot of meat on the bones of what he was given, whereas some other novelizations are a skimpy go-along ride, not veering too much far off the script and inside the character's mind, where this expands on that. From the opening scene, the decay and filth of Smith's Grove is felt. From the start, Dr. Sartain's motives are expressed more intimately. As a former student of Dr. Loomis at the University of Illinois, his obsession over Michael Myers is clear. The sentiment of Michael's departure is poignant for Sartain, for the mysteries of Myers are still unknown. Soon he'll be transferred to Glass Hill, Colorado around Halloween. Aaron and Dana play a tape recording of Dr. Loomis, dated January 22nd, 1979, in which Loomis is recommending termination of Michael. The state of Illinois no longer desires to examine Michael Myers and have signed him over to a private security in Colorado. In a scene not shown in the movie, Michael Myers is shackled in anticipation of his transfer night. Sartain gets on the bus, apologizing to Michael for being late. A scene thankfully cut from the movie was when Aaron dons the Michael Myers mask naked in the hotel room as the podcasters hook up. Haddonfield High School, their nickname is the Huskers, the Haddonfield Huskers, and their school colors are blue and yellow. You might recall the scene where they visit Judith Myers' gravestone in Haddonfield Cemetery. Then briefly, the caretaker actually sees Michael Myers off in the distance. He's still in his asylum whites. And another unique thing about this novel is they have the perspective of Michael Myers. They'll do these italic print paragraphs from Michael Myers' vantage point, not his thoughts or anything, just his movements, describing the shape, you know, sidling through the bushes and whatnot. Dr. Sartain explains how Michael escaped to the police. He overtook the first guard, causing the bus to crash. He then changed Sartain and left him. Officer Hawkins is able to give a little tidbit on Haddonfield in the 40 years since the Michael Myers murders, including that the Michael Myers house became an object of attraction for serial killer groupies and death metal bands. It's now a community garden as it was torn down by a non-profit organization. That explains why it really isn't featured in the movie. Lori's trauma is delved into deeply and her tragic and traumatic relationship with her daughter is also fleshed out more in the novel than it is in the book. 
The ending of the movie shows a scene of Michael Myers burning in the cellar, as you might re remember. In the novel, it's described that Michael's hands start burning. Then the mask boils from the intense heat of the fire, presumably destroying it. And then his whole body is engulfed by the flames. But it leaves off saying that the shape struggles. Watching the movie and reading the book, there's a lot of teenage drama with Allison. That would be Lori's daughter and her friends that just comes off as not too funny the more you watch it and reading it. All in all, it's an exceptional movie novelization. The deaths are in great detail and he's able to save them for multiple paragraphs. It isn't skimmed over in any way. The history of movie novelizations in the Halloween franchise is very rich. The unanimous king of horror movie novelizations has to be Halloween by Curtis Richards, released a year after the film's smashing success in 1979. Being out of print and never republished since then, even tattered copies routinely go for $100. Released by Bantam Books, the alternate cover and more sought-after one has to be the jack-o'-lantern head featuring him clutching the knife that's bleeding in white robes. Wrapping up my thoughts on the Halloween 2018 novelization, the most compelling aspect of the Halloween franchise to me is the study case of evil as the asylum doctor chases after his patient on the dark streets on a Halloween night and that atmosphere. The sick curiosity of Dr. Sartain wanting to witness Michael Myers unleashed and free from the confinement of Smith's Grove is the driving force in this movie. The juxtaposition of those two characters is most intriguing, as they both construct and stir the hysteria that is evil incarnate Michael Myers, the boogeyman. Although I wasn't too much of a fan of the film outside of Dr. Sartain, this book is really genuine. My only criticism would be that I feel Dennis Etchison did a tremendous job describing Halloween in his novelizations, part two and three. You really felt the holiday, the darkness in the air, the cold wind, the festivities, the ornaments, whereas John Passarella, he did a great job describing Smith's Grove, and I thought he was going to be great at describing Halloween, but... I felt like he didn't do enough to describe what if an Illinois Halloween really felt like in terms of ambiance. A- minus is my final grade with a high recommendation. If you're not into horror movie novelizations, this is one to step into and seek out. This has been a Paul Parkanum segment by JBM.